Now that I have completed the drive system for this robot, I've decided that the next best step is to build the rotating platform, which I'll then mount the arm to. And the reason I've decided to do that before building the, uh, the final version of this uh, structure that holds up all the uh, rotary walker parts is that I want to know how big that is going to be before, um, before building the rest of the body because it'd be nice to be able to integrate it in a, an aesthetically pleasing way and I'd like to have these arms so that they come flush to the rotating element or at least you know provide space for that. So I don't know how big that's going to be so I'm going to do that first and then I'll construct the uh, final version of this body. Um, the reason that I do need the rotating arm is because one of the pedestals that has ping pong balls on them, the pedestals that uh, have the ping pong balls are four inches high, one of those pedestals is on the wall. And the wall that you have to climb over is six inches tall and ten inches wide. And so one solution would be to just drive up to the wall and reach over it up to the top of the pedestal and just grab the ball. The reason that I'm scared to make a long arm that can do uh, can do that big of a reach is that when they measure the size of your robot at this competition, they stretch whatever robotic uh, arms or any limbs that your robot has as far out as possible, and they measure the length and width that way. And because the limit is two feet, I'm afraid that an arm big enough to uh, reach that high would probably push this over the length limit. So my solution is to have a rotating element that I then get up on top of the platform and I just turn the arm and pick it up on the side. That would let you have a shorter arm because you don't have to reach above the 6 inch wall and then on top of the 4 inch platform. And it would also let me not have to turn around on the wall because if the wall's 10 inches wide this can't um, sit parallel to the wall on top of the wall it, it'll fall down so I'm gonna try to build that um, and we'll I'll see how how well that works and if it ends up being a sturdy mounting point then I'll go along with that if not then I'll have to come up with a different solution but for now I plan to use another one of these GM3 motors to turn the arm and to slow it down because it's a little bit too fast and it might be out of control I've got these uh, came from a kit's connects gears and I'll be mounting this to the platform this to the motor itself and then that'll reduce the speed um, this is just slightly too small to fit on the motor so I should be able to Dremel tool out two notches and it should fit right on. Now for the actual platform itself this is what I have in mind. This piece would be the base. I don't actually know what this came from but it will then have um, the beam sticking out of it and this uh, spinning element on top which I'll then attach to the gear and the uh, platform to this. And this is just uh, two small ball bearings. It's actually uh, the outside black pieces from a Crayola marker. This is actually, you may remember, um, the spinning piece is the center of the wheel I had on the um, top of the hill robot, but that's irrelevant. Okay, as you can see, I have finished my rotating platform. And it does look a little different from my original plans, but as I got going, I had to change some things. The first problem that I ran into was the gear ratio between uh, the two Kinex gears. When I had this mounted to the GM3 motor, it was too fast. It wasn't precise enough, and uh, I can't have a super fast moving arm. So the first uh, solution that I came up with was making another gear. And I cut this out of, I think it's one quarter inch PVC. And it might be three eighths. Yes, yeah, one quarter. Um, and this was pretty painstaking, and it did work. In the end, it uh, when I had it mounted to the uh, GM3 or the servo, the ratio was correct, and it did give me the movement that I wanted. But I ended up, at the same time, stumbling across this perfect gear ring with a gear. 
and this was just in my spare parts uh, stuff, and this came from a spinning fish lava lamp thing, and I ended up going with that gear as opposed to my homemade gear and the Kinex gear because it allowed me to put the motor inside the rotating platform space. And so that combined with using the servo as opposed to the larger GM3 motor let me make this whole spinning device um, completely within the size limit of the circle. So I can put like a covering probably around. I'm not sure what I'll end up deciding. It'll have to be a light material that will basically isolate this as just a rotating cylinder and you will have all I'll be able to have all the electronics and stuff tucked inside. It'll give it a cleaner look than with having the motor outside the platform. So yep, the uh, platform itself has four holes drilled on and uh, nuts are glued below each of the holes which lets me mount different things onto the top and screw it in and then change it if need be. So I'll be going with an arm for this design but if I ever want to change this platform to something different it'll make it easier. Um, oh yeah, the uh, servo mounts. These are made from this stuff called shape lock here. Let me get it out. And these are beads that you can heat up in the microwave or in boiling water. And they then basically form a putty that you can manipulate. And then when it hardens, it's a plastic. So I used that to form my servo mounts, drilled them out, and just screwed the servo into that. Glued this on to my... Uh, plastic pieces and it all came together in one one nice little package. It is a little bit heavier than I wanted it to be but uh, it will be mounted in the center of the robot. It shouldn't change the weight distribution and it needs it to be sturdy to uh, support whatever I'm going to have on top so the weight is worth it. Um, yeah I did spray paint that beige uh, base black this piece right here is to support this so that it doesn't slide down because it's just on ball bearings. That is a PVC pipe. Um, this is cut out of PVC, that big black thing. It is put on pretty ugly with just a big glob of hot glue. Um, that's not aesthetically pleasing, but it's going to be probably covered up by my cylinder idea anyway. So you're not going to see any of this mess. You'll just see a nice blue spinning circle. Um... Oh yeah, I did add support to the uh, bottom just to uh, limit any back and forth movement that I might get just because this plastic was a little bit flexible. So that actually did help. It's just four pieces of PVC glued in there. Um, yeah, this, uh, this whole thing will just mount to the center of the robot and it's high enough that this should be about the height of the two arms that I'm going to have to uh, support the front wheels. And that will uh, that'll clear the arm for uh, moving around the whole robot. There shouldn't be anything that's high enough on the robot to get in the way of its movement. Um, yeah, so the next step is to be cutting out the body. And I don't have... I mean, just like this went a little differently than I planned. I don't expect this uh, these ideas that I have to end up being exactly what I'd, I end up doing, but this is the uh, sketch that I have for the body. I'll be making the platform out of um, PVC instead of cardboard like it was on my first my first draft. We'll call it a rough draft. Uh, this red pen shows the shape of the current cardboard platform, and if I'm going to use PVC, it's going to be heavier. So, as you can see with my PVC shape, I've got a lot of holes drilled in locations that aren't going to affect the structure. It'll also give it a uniform look with the white plastic and the sort of uh, Swiss cheese looking structure. Um, yeah, so that's my current uh, situation. It's going pretty well.